Hello, my name is Matt Gordon and in this video I'll be covering an unintentional blind spot birthed from unfamiliarity with music. Um, unfamiliarity with music may hinder enjoyment and result in a negative opinion of the music itself. We could be led to think that a particular form of music is inferior or unintelligent simply because we're not used to it. Without opening our ears to other experimental sounds and worldly music, we could be assuming that non-Western music is a lesser form. In addition, we could be limiting our possibility for heightened empathy as well. So let's begin by looking at two examples of world music through traditional pieces of both African and Arabian music to start off. Um, so let's begin by looking at a piece of traditional African music. <laughs> It has an odd rhythm to it, doesn't it? The percussive claps and slaps sometimes feel a bit off, uh, particularly with an abrasive pulse like the one the man on the far left uh, introduced. Um, so it can be difficult to feel something like that. Um, let's look at one more example. clips, the musicians are utilizing polyrhythms and somewhat more complex meters to produce their sound. Uh, this means that the music is often focused on the interplay between the grooves. Um, to them, all this feels natural. Um, so now let's take a look at a piece of traditional Arabian music. has its own sound to it, doesn't it? It certainly doesn't sound American, and to many American ears it can sound a bit strange and off-kilter. You might not hate it per se, but it likely sounds a little weird, old-fashioned, or not very advanced. At least not as advanced as our sturdy Western music, with firm resolutions, strong choruses, and rhythms you can nod your head along with. In America, we typically separate an octave into 12 notes. A, A-sharp, B, C, C-sharp, D, D-sharp, E, F, F-sharp, G, and G-sharp. These notes each represent a particular frequency. For example, a middle C has a frequency right around 261 hertz, uh, but frequency is a spectrum, so there's a near limitless range of other tones in between these standardized notes. Um, that's where microtonality comes into play. So the standard Arabian tone system divides the octave into 24 tones rather than 12, each with their own unique name. So that's part of what gives Arabian music its distinct sound, is microtonality. You may think it's just preference, but the bias that comes with underappreciating unfamiliar music is present and observable directly in your brain. Uh, one 2011 study found that based on the findings of their fMRI data, the researchers concluded that familiarity is, quote, a crucial factor in making the listeners emotionally engaged with music, end quote. So while you may think you're ready to give every form of music you come across a fair shot, it's likely your brain is saying otherwise. We're not always prepared to give something an equal opportunity. Another study from 2018 found heightened activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex of the brain in empathetic people when listening to unfamiliar music. This part of the brain is responsible in part for decreasing intense feelings. In other words, it appears that these people are doing a slightly better job of setting aside their biases and previous feelings. They're simmering down while listening and taking in the new information as it comes. So going back to those microtones that often sound harsh, grating, and out of tune, we can surround a microtone, in this case an A half sharp, with a cluster of other notes to create a richer, more atmospheric, and full sound, like this. It still sounds a bit weird, um, incorrect, and maybe a little out of place, like it doesn't know where it belongs, and that adds dissonance. Um, but what if we add in something more conventional and traditional sounding to our ears, like an acoustic guitar strumming along? Thank you. 
This is the beginning of Radiohead's How to Disappear Completely, a very successful track off their album Kid A from the year 2000. It opens with a cluster of notes being played with no real tonal agreement to the key of the song, and this dissonance continues until roughly a minute and a half into the song when the first chorus kicks in. So while the Arabian music is using microtones as typical notes to pull from, uh, Radiohead here are using a microtone amidst a cluster to create texture because they understand their audience will likely perceive it to sound off and distant, dissonant. This song is also a good example of polymeter. So the guitar comes in uh, playing a rhythm we usually feel is a reasonably standard and comfortable 6-8. But the bass disrupts this rhythm by floating around in the back, playing what would feel like a bouncy quarter note rhythm in standard 4-4. Four four. And it's not just Radiohead. Plenty of other musicians are still making new, exciting, and popular Western music while finding ways to deviate from the norms. Billabong Valley by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard uses plenty of easy-to-hear, Arabian-esque microtonality. Song 5 4 by Gorillaz features a guitar playing in 5 4 time, uh, but the drums come in, however, and disrupt the rhythm by playing over top in a 4 4, creating a groovy yet loose sense of polymeter ever so slightly reminiscent of those complex African rhythms. <laughs> So, while there are certainly regional aspects of music, you can still find elements of world music mixed into more popular or mainstream western music as well. I think it's important to hear and feel the music for what it is, and approach something unfamiliar with optimism, opportunity, and open ears. When you start listening for a deeper understanding, you will begin hearing more complexities. Leave your predispositions at the door and let yourself get lost in the music.